The following is a presentation of TFNN. Now, 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 TFNN opens the door to the future. Larry Pesamento, systems analyst, is your tour guide into the market futures. Want to see into the future? Well, climb aboard Larry's time machine and come with us. Larry takes your phone calls now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. This is the Futures Hour. Here's your host, Larry Pesamento. Okay, good afternoon, folks. We're going to have Rich Anderson uh, on the show at the half hour. We're having a, a crop report today in the grains, and we're certainly at some key levels here in uh, December corn, and we want to be watching that very, very closely. Uh, we started the show today by posting in a long-term chart for our sugar, and then we took it to the 60-minute chart showing the cycles that were there. Uh, it appears that the longer-term cycle in sugar might be turning higher, and so we'll be watching to see if we get a pullback in sugar over the next uh, a week or so. We might be able to get a low-risk entry point somewhere around 1650 in sugar, but that's uh, down the road next week. The next chart that I wanted to talk about is the one that everybody is uh, talking about, and that's the gold. You know, we've had a collapse in the gold market um, that, you know, it's not been a surprise to anybody. It's been acting very weak for quite some time with the weak rallies that we've had. It had a really good chance up in that 1355 to 1360 level to hold. But once we broke below the lows that we made last April on the 15th, below 1332, that set up the next target, which comes in at the 61% retracement of the 2008 low. And that comes in at $1,170 per ounce. That's going to be a very, very uh, important figure to watch uh, in, the, in the gold market. Now, you don't necessarily want to be a, a buyer there. The best thing to do is to wait to see if the market will hold. Uh, you know, we held at the 50% level for quite some time. We held there for well over three and a half weeks. And we want to be able to see if we can hold the 61% retracement uh, at that point. You know, the long-term chart in gold, if you go back, uh, you know, to when the bull market started in 2002 when it was below uh, 200 or $280 an ounce, is still intact. Uh, this is one of the larger corrections that we've had. Uh, since that time, but uh, it's still a long-term bull market. This this correction has taken just about 18 months from the high that we made, you know, last September. The negative part of this uh, potential here is the fact that we're losing open interest uh, dramatically in the gold market. Uh, we've lost over 25 percent just in the past few, uh, I think, the past six trading days, and that means people are leaving the market, both longs and shorts. And so it leaves the market um, pretty much naked, I guess, to see which direction it's going to go. If we had a big increase in open interest here, that would tell us that there's new shorts coming into the market, and that would tell us that they're in control and you could push the market down. But that's not what's happening. You know, we're having a, a dis dissipation of interest, so we have to play it carefully. That doesn't mean you can't get massive, you know, rallies in gold, and once they start, you know, people come in to buy it. For some reason, people do not want to buy gold when it's going down. They're afraid to buy something at a at a good price. When it's going up, they line up like, uh, you know, ducks on a pond because it just literally, it's, it's well, as you, as you all know, it's a very emotional metal. And as we were going up to, you know, that $1,962 uh, uh, per ounce level, you know, open interest was uh, also uh, dropping, which means that there were new longs. Uh, uh, exiting, uh, there were no new longs coming into the market. It was only short covering, and once that was over, the market fell of its own weight. So uh, it's going to be interesting at that 1170. Uh, we'll be there most probably. This is Thursday. We were only sixty dollars away, so we could either be there today or tomorrow or possibly Monday uh, if we get to that level. I don't see any any magical level stopping right here. And if you go back and look at the lows uh, and the highs in gold, they stop very close to these Fibonacci numbers in nearly exact fashion. So 1170 is what we want to be waiting for. Uh, this, the pattern that we're looking at in gold is very similar to the pattern that we were looking at in Apple, that we were looking for Apple to get down to that uh, you know, $392 uh, per share level, and we did. And then you know Apple rallied $80 dollars. 
uh, a share. But, you know, Apple is still acting incredibly poorly, folks, because it's it's trading right at the 786 of the previous move uh, from the 385 level, and that is not a very good sign for Apple. Whether that means anything for the stock market or not, you know, I'm not sure. Today we made a 61% retracement in the E-mini S&P up to the uh, 13, uh, six, excuse me, 1613 level. And uh, my opinion is, is that, you know, we're in a major bear market here. You know, whether we are or not, I'm not sure. But uh, this is what we're looking at as far as, uh, uh, you know, where the stocks are right now. The VIX index is held up above the, uh, the 16 level. We thought that it could get there. We're still trading uh, in the 16 the high 16, so it's got a chance to do that. It's got to have the higher bottoms, so to me, this is a pretty good selling opportunity in stocks. But whether that happens or not, we'll wait to see. Let's move on. Um, let's move on to the. I want to talk about the XAU because you know we have this uh, breakdown that we've got going on in the gold market and in the silver market, and uh, it's uh, you know been very very dramatic, and we are. Uh, we've broken below some inc very uh, very key levels uh, in the uh, in the market for the XAU. Uh, we haven't made new lows from 2008 yet, but uh, we could be close at any time. We have uh, uh, th this long-term weekly chart that I posted into Tiger TV uh, shows that over the past uh, five years we've had some big swings. They've all hit on these numbers pretty nicely. And, uh, you know, when it was trading at 100.95, it looked like it really had a chance, you know, to, uh, you know, have a pretty good move. And it, it moved 10% off that bottom and then quickly went below it. And now the only other support that we have is down around that 78, uh, 90 level. And uh, that might be equivalent if we get to the 1170 in the, um, in the gold. But uh, this is a, a, it's been a very, very bearish uh, market in this market ever since uh, December of 2010. It's been down, uh, well, it's dropped, you know, well over 60% of its value. And you can just look at some of the gold and silver stocks and you can see, you know, how badly some of them have been beaten up. And this is coming at a time when the S&P, or excuse me, when the Fed is in there with QE2, QE3, QE1, giving all kinds of money out. But in fact, nothing has really happened, you know, with, uh, you know, with the fear of inflation or anything of that nature. In fact, uh, you know, you have to be a real uh, a real believer that uh, there's not a lot of inflation out there unless you go to the supermarket. You know, I it just amazes me. There's only uh, the two of us here at home, Sarah and I, and I, I can't imagine having a family of, you know, uh, four kids or three kids and trying to feed them and stuff because, my gosh, the price of, uh, you know, everything is just going uh, through the roof, but, you know, it's not being shown to the CPI. And now with home prices, you know, rising back uh, supposedly to the levels where they were in 2006 or 2007, you know, why isn't inflation, you know, raising its head? But uh, those are questions for uh, economists far beyond uh, my pay grade, so I'm not going to worry uh, too much about that. I want to move. Uh, we're going to have Rich, uh, like I mentioned, we're going to have Rich Anderson uh, on the um, on the show, but I wanted to bring up uh, where we are in the um, December corn right now. Uh, we are making a 786 retracement of the move that we had, and uh, it is uh, you know right at the 535 level. After we had the first 786 retracement down at 526, we rallied well over uh, $2,200 a contract. Uh, we were able to, you know, get out of those, and we bought it back at the 61% retracement. And uh, we have a crop report today, so this is going to be, this is going to be interesting here because, um, you know, if you're not, if you didn't take advantage of the first leg in that corn, and you don't have $2,000, you know, put in your pocket, it's very difficult to go into a new report. Uh, with a, a position, uh, and, and, you know, if you'd have bought it there today, uh, at either at, f at 543 at the 618 or at 536 at the 786, if you go into this report, you know, you, you probably have a 10 to 20 percent risk, but if you're right, you certainly can have a bigger, a bigger move uh, to the upside uh, in the corn. Now, what's interesting about the corn, and, and I'm sure Rich will bring this up to, uh, to our attention when we talk to him, is if you take a look at July corn, 
which is the spot corn, the one it is, uh, it's going to be going off the board around the middle of July, and we'll be switching over uh, to September. But if you take a look at July corn, you'll see that it's still in a been a strong uptrend, you know, since last April. We've had higher bottoms, you know, all along. Uh, you know, it's it's actually about unchanged on the day today. So that's telling us that the demand for corn, the actual physical corn, is very very strong because we have May corn trading at 664 a bushel, and we have December. Corn, which is the new crop that's growing right now, trading at 536. So there's a dollar 30 per bushel level uh, difference in corn, folks. When I started trading corn, it was trading a dollar 10 to a dollar 12. That was the trading range for a week. You you might have a two or three cent trading range for the whole week in corn. And now we're we're looking at uh, July at a dollar twenty discount over the December. So no matter what happens to December, you know they they need corn. Are they gonna are they gonna use all the demand and 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 go below a dollar uh, and twenty cents a bushel from where we are now? That would be giving corn away, and I don't think that'll happen. And we've always said that you're going to get more than one or two crop scares every year. And you know we're coming into July fourth, and we had a very late crop this year in corn because there was so much wet weather. And I just don't think that there's a whole lot of risk here in owning December corn. Unfortunately, we were one of the people that you know bought it down there when it was at the, you know, the 530 level before it rallied, uh, you know, well over you know 44 cents a bushel, uh, actually 47 cents a bushel. And so we have a little bit of cushion uh, in that particular move. But to me, it looks like it's going to be um, a pretty much a no-brainer. We'll we'll double check this, uh, of course, when we come out uh, to, on the report on. On uh, Monday, that when we do our show, we'll, we'll certainly talk about the report and see uh, see what it does. But the numbers are lining up that it's going to be a friendly report from the December uh, t- uh, crop year, just because of the price levels and the difference between May and the um, excuse me the, the July and the December contracts. That's the big difference, and that, those are growing difference. When you when you have stocks, you don't have to worry about seasonalities and stuff like that. But when you're in commodities, you certainly have to pay attention, you know, to the things that uh, you know make these uh, markets grow and everything like that. And that makes it real interesting. We have a uh, we've been waiting very patiently for something uh, to happen in the wheat market. And uh, we're getting very, very close uh, to having the pattern complete here in wheat. I'm going to put that in there to let you folks take a look at it. Uh, That's down about another 40 cents. And then we would be able to have a pretty good indication that we could buy some uh, wheat at the uh, around the 625 per bushel level. Um, there's a there's also the chance that we could make a double bottom for what we had last March, but we need a little bit more time uh, on the wheat. After the report today, we'll have some better ideas of uh, what's happening. But you know, wheat has been in a downtrend for uh, a year now. You know, we had a big move from June through July where it moved. Uh, you know, well over fifteen thousand dollars a bushel in a matter of uh, just a well, it was only three weeks, and then after that, it's taken uh, a year of one full year to get the market to come all the way down. We got to take a break here. Okay, let's get. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading, and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. You 
you've always taken the long view when it comes to investing. But what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risk charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts has officially launched at TFNN. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind software, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, Butterflies, ABCs, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the market for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, and even months searching to find. As part of our introductory pricing, we're offering licenses available at only $59 per month. We're so confident that you'll love this new outstanding piece of charting software that we'll even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Lock in your low price today by ordering your copy at TFNN.com. Larry, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, back to the Futures Hour. Okay, we're back, folks, and uh, we're taking a look now at... Uh, November soybeans. That's the new crop soybeans. They're planted uh, starting in May, and they go. They plant. You can plant them as late as July, but then you risk the possibility of frost. But as you can see uh, in this particular chart, you know we've had three higher bottoms uh, since 2011, and uh, the last one came in at the 786 retracement in April, and now we're we're retesting. We've just made a 50% retracement uh, Gartley pattern. Uh, just recently, just about three or four days ago. And uh, so we're in a giant triangle here uh, in soybeans uh, for quite some time. And we're trading at a very high level, folks. I mean, you're, you're talking about beans at $12.73 and, and a bushel. That is really, uh, really amazing. Now, soybeans have a unique feature, and that is they have an inelastic demand. And that means that no matter what the price, they're going to be used. Uh, they basically, uh, it's used in everything from margarine to paint and everything else. I don't know. I'll tell you a little bit about the history of soybeans. But the reason why soybeans are so important, it's actually a Chinese crop. And Henry Ford wanted to paint cars, uh, you know, colorful colors. But with lacquer, they could only make it in black. And so what he did was he found out that if he could use soybean oil and mass produce it, he could make, uh, you know, soybean oil paint, and that would make it, uh, you know, a lot easier. This is going back into the to the 1900s. So he was responsible for bringing the soybean crop uh, to the United States. And of course, after they got it here, the first few years, they realized it had such high nitrogen that they would grind the, the soybean crops uh, from year to year. They would rotate the crop.
crops after the Dust Bowl years, that after you'd have a crop of corn, you would plant a crop of beans and then just uh, just grind the crop of beans into the soil, and that would give nitrogen into the soil, and then your crops of beans would become up greater. And then as soybeans became very popular, uh, mainly because of the oil, the soybean oil, then soybean meal for the you know the cattle and hogs and stuff like that. Uh, and then also margarine. Remember that margarine was soybean oil that's you know hydrogenated and made into uh, you know synthetic butter. And those of you that rem- might remember this, oh, we got a caller coming in from our good friend from Philadelphia, John. Are you there? Hey, Larry. Good to speak How to are you. you? I'm good very to well, speak thank to you. you. How about yourself? Very good, thank you. What yeah, can I do for hey, you today, um, my I friend? Wanted to ask, I wanted to ask you about these corn. Uh, just before I do, let me just share a uh, tidbit with you about July corn. You made uh, good reference to the idea that uh, July corn at six sixty-five is trading at about thirty premium to these corn. Just to let you know, Larry. Uh, On account of the drought that occurred last summer, with the crop only coming at like 10 billion bushels uh, as compared to 14 billion, what everybody hoped would have occurred, virtually in in many parts of of the the country, corn literally has run out. And people are trying to scrounge, looking to sweep out the silos. Uh, and just make do with whatever crumbs they have left until the new harvest starts to come in, you know, late August, early September. So that, that premium up of a buck thirty over the, the new crop is merely on account that there's virtually no corn left to sell. So I just wanted to share that. But my question for you on these corn, sir, um, I see the pattern set up you're, you're referring to. As a trader, Larry, Can you just share with us uh, your personal policies about taking trade positions right in advance of USDA crop reports like the one we've got tomorrow at noontime? (laughs) Well, John, it's not a very good idea uh, if you just if it's a you know brand new position and, and everything like that. But on this particular position, you know we bought the corn right. It it rallied well over you know uh, forty some cents a bushel, which was two thousand dollars. We were fortunate enough, you know, to take the profits when it you know broke out to new high and it reached our second profit objective. And so uh, we bought it back at the five forty three level. Uh, that was a sixty one percent retracement. We're still in that. That position, and we have a you know we have a 15 cent stop working, you know on that position because of this report that's due out today, and you know it's always a surprise, but our feeling is that there's going to be more than one crop scare between July 1st, and uh, when they start harvesting on October the 14th, it'll be too much rain, too much heat, or too much frost. It'll be something that uh, that happens. We get them every year. It's just like clockwork. Very good. But, I appreciate but, but, that input. But, but going into report is not smart. <laughs> yeah. I will, I will share this with you, Larry. The, the, the crop report that is coming tomorrow, Friday, it, it comes out at noontime. Uh, that report is uh, divulging two things. One, the revised acreage estimates, and two, just the grain stocks left over. So the, uh, the, uh, the contracts will be open for trading right as that uh, report comes out, just for your information. Okay. Thank you. Rich will be on at the break, my friend. Thanks for calling in. Thank you. With the stock market flirting with all-time highs and volatility back, Now is the perfect time for a two-week free trial to Market Insights. On Monday, June 24th, Tom O'Brien closed out all five open positions in his daily newsletter, Market Insights, with all trades being profitable and ranging from a 2.23% gain all the way to more than an 11% gain in just one position for an incredible 32.7% profit combined between the five trades. Let Tom O'Brien's years of market experience work for you. If you'd like to see for yourself what kind of trading newsletter Tom O'Brien delivers to his clients each morning, then now is a perfect time to sign up for a two-week free trial to his daily newsletter, Market Insights. In a volatile market like we currently have, the potential for fast market moves like we've seen recently is a trader's dream. So don't wait any longer. Sign up for your two-week free trial to Market Insights today at the front page of TFNN.com.
In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page at TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, the Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern, on TFNN. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern, and you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV, but if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.mob in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Now, back to the Futures Hour. Okay, folks, we're back, and we'll have Rich on the line in just a second, hopefully. Um, what we're going to be talking about now is the, I put in the chart for platinum on a long-term basis. You can see we broke down long before uh, many of these things uh, started to uh, break down and that's the, the real key to what we're looking at here. The main thing that I'd like to talk about with platinum is that we broke that triple bottom that went back to 2012 and so with when you look at this and you look at the price of copper and some of the other things that are going on it's really hard to be bullish stocks. I know they they're going up but uh you know frankly it's it's one of them's got to be wrong. Either these commodities are you know they're giving them away or the stocks are wrong. I don't know which it is. Uh you know I'm I'm not a fundamentalist. Uh, I don't listen to the things that people uh, talk about, uh, uh, you know, uh, economically. Even though I have a you know master's degree, I still don't understand it fully. But I don't think they do either. So that's the I guess we're even on that uh, on that point. But uh, you just have to ask yourself, why are these things going down so much? If in fact things were really as good as they are, if in fact the market is really bullish and we are going to go up and take out uh, new highs here uh, from what we did in May. And then I would say that uh, you know there's something out there that uh, is uh, that is uh, uh, that is not being seen, and these commodities will eventually pick up. But co copper, in particularly, we put that that copper price uh, you know on the line several times. Finally, we got Rich online. Rich, are you there? I'm here. By the, hey, by the way, in the, you know what they call copper? They call it Doctor Copper. Why do they call it that? 
Because it uh, has a doctor in economics, a Ph.D. in economics. Yeah. You know, well, it's, it, 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 when copper's going up, you can just know that the world economies are going to do better. When copper's going down, you can know that the world economies are not doing very well. Well, the stocks are not telling us that, Rich, so one of them's got to be wrong this time. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. But um, nowadays, money flow overrules fundamentals. Oh, I certainly believe that. You can see that in the markets, you know, with gold as uh, low as it's getting. I imagine with some of the speculators that you know that they're actually surprised at the fact that gold is under $1,300 uh, per ounce. Right, but you can't yeah. over, A, you can't, uh, you can't underestimate money flow, mm -hmm. number one. Mm -hmm. And uh, number two, in the gold, a, a lot of the, the gold is owned by ETF. And that money's like, in the old days, we used to call it hot money, you know, it's, it's quick. Yeah. And we're coming to the end of the month and the end of the quarter. So yep. that money flow, you know, it, it, just, it just runs out. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, quick, it's quick to go to someplace else, just like, you know, money's uh, been running out of the bond fund. Yeah. Rich, I've always had a, you know, a strong uh, suspicion against ETFs. It just looks, uh, you know, like somebody tried to make a different loaf of bread without using flour. And uh, I, I'm a little I'm a little bit uh, suspect about some of these products that they might, you know, renege on some of these contracts, much like Simplot did with pa with potatoes, you know, back in the early 80s. And I'm just uh, I was just wondering if you have that same feeling about some of these ETFs that are put out by, you know, these companies like BlackRock and Blackstone and, you know, some of the others? Well, um, BlackRock is a, a very big uh, company and, and may be committed to making a market in their products. But the liquid, you, I mean, you hit it on the head. Liquidity is, a, is, a, is one of your major risks when you're trading ETF, that you get into an ETF that all of a sudden loses popularity and now there's no liquidity. Or, and or, um, what, what uh, a week ago, one of the... Uh, one of the funds wasn't allowing uh, liquidation for seven days. You know, uh, wow. I mean, they're, they, when money's coming in, it's no problem. But when <laughs> money starts going out, it, it can become a big problem. <laughs> you sort know of like I'm being saying? at home, right? <laughs> Just like it is at home. <laughs> yep. Rich, tell us about the crop report. we got a big one coming up t t tomorrow big morning, one. right? Uh, yeah. The crop report's tomorrow at noon. Eastern time, which is coming out right during Central. right during market hours to make things just a little volatile. Right, and uh, it's going to be a market mover, and and usually it uncovers the unknown unknowns. Hey, what do you mean by that, Rich? Well, there's you know there's there's always a surprise that uh, people weren't thinking about. And what do they what do they think it'll be this year? Well, back in March, as an example, they gave us 400 million bushels of corn that we didn't know we had. Well, so this time they'll take is, it away. Well, this time they'll take it away from us. <laughs> well, that, that, that's a that's a possibility. I mean, the basis is the amount that the uh, processors and the users, the cattle feeders, actually have to pay for that corn, and and that's that's the real world. That's not that's not that's not the political world where the USDA can put a number on a piece of paper and saying that's what we've got. And the basis is still super strong for both corn and beans. You, if you want to buy actual cash corn, you're paying sixty cents or more over the futures market. If you want to buy actual cash beans, you're paying over a dollar over the actual cash futures market. Wow. So that's the real world. The USDA can put on a pen that, uh, on a piece of paper that we've got this, this many bushels, but you know, if they're not out there in the real world, it doesn't matter what the piece of paper says. So first mm -hmm. notice day then uh, comes tomorrow night. And so year long as of tomorrow night, you have the potential to take delivery in wheat corner beans as an example. Mm -hmm. But of course there is very little of uh, wheat, plenty for de early deliveries, but not a, not a tremendous amount mm -hmm. because we've been feeding it uh, since last year, and the stocks mm -hmm. are actually uh, the deliverable areas are about half of what they have been. Yeah. But in corn and beans, there's next to none, um, and so we go into first delivery day next Monday, and if there's no deliveries, then all of a sudden the July contracts have to converge. That's where cash and futures become the same over mm -hmm. the month of July. Rich, do you remember back in the uh, mid seventies? Nineteen seventy-two. Yeah, yeah, when Bungie Bungie was short corn, and they had to pay three dollars a bushel higher on the uh, on the. I think it was the uh, it was the last day. Last they had day to of cover trading. The, there there yeah. is no limit yeah. in the delivery months. 
And I don't was, know how many people know or I don't hap- know that. I happened to be involved in that, and it, it, it jumped like 40 cents right away. And this was corn was like 250 or something, so that was a monster move. And, uh, I, you know, my broker said, you know, we ought to take it here, and we did. And it moved $10,000. Of course, you couldn't have been in it because there were very few contracts left, but they moved $10,000 higher that day. I, I sat there in amazement, and he told me, he said, uh, you're never going to see this again. And so far we haven't, but we could see something like that this uh, this coming Monday, if if it gets as crazy as it sounds. Well, the the, the uh, it could be the beginning of it. It's towards mm-hmm. the end of the now the CFTC to to help manage the transition will be called anybody that has large positions and saying you know do you have legitimate cash positions against this that you have to be long this much. Uh, I have some friends in the in the grain business, and you know they received those calls in May on their beans. And they Do made, they really? They actually get a call from the CFTC? Oh yeah, and ask, yeah. Wow. If I'm if, if I'm holding three million bushels of beans, they're going to call up and say why. Well, can't you just tell them I think it's going to go higher? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's not that's not how it works in delivery. They're trying to manage yeah. an orderly transition from sure the, the, in the convergence and. And so if you're a registered hedger, you know, you have to convince them that, you know, you have sales against those longs or et cetera. Yeah. Rich, you probably remember this. Uh, the king of the egg market was Milo King. Do you remember him from back yep. in the 70s? Yep. And uh, he had a process where he was having trouble with delivery of eggs. And they, he finally he delivered all of his eggs, but they were all rotten eggs. And <laughs> there was a big lawsuit over that for many years. But uh, he, was, uh, he was really a character. He was, uh, he was the Damon Runyon of the commodity business at the time. But uh, that was a big contract. Uh, and they hardly ever trade eggs anymore. But that's well, part of it. Egg- Eggs like potatoes and pork yeah. bellies no longer exist. Yeah, even pork bellies are gone now. Yep. Wow, I, I wasn't aware of that. Wow, I traded bellies for years, and they were they were great trading things, but uh, you know they didn't uh, they didn't measure up when it came to consumption. I guess pork bellies, folks, is frozen bacon. That's what it really is. Right, and it can be uh, the size yeah. of the hog. It could be anything okay. from a twenty pound uh, side to a twenty eight pound side. Mm-hmm. But if I'm a processor in Omaha, mm. my my slicer to slice those mm. into bacon might only handle, say, a 20 to 22 pound uh, pork belly. And wow. so, if they deliver 28 pounders and uh, I'm taking delivery, I can't use those. Right. So it, it didn't work very well. The short of it, it is, it didn't work very yeah. well, and they're now gone. How are you? How are you positioning yourself into the report, Rich? Are you have a? Are you either long short, or you're waiting, or what? What is your well, what is your strategy? Okay. Uh, the, the the strategies I'm using are, are mostly spreads and some complicated option positions that would be uh, too long to explain. But I mean, <laughs> if you want to try the, the the long side of the market, uh, long SEP, short these corn, or long SEP Minneapolis wheat, short these Minneapolis wheat. I mean, it's been awfully wet up here, and so some of the uh, spring wheat didn't get in. Um, mm-hmm. Like the the guy that farms my land in South Dakota said, well. They count the number of acres that are planted, but at least 5% of them have drowned it out. And, of course, he farms in Iowa, too, and he said the same thing that occurred in Iowa. So it's going to be an interesting report. I mean, end of month, end of the quarter, USDA numbers, um, it's going to be very interesting. The, the sell-off in the, in the metals looks to me like it might have climaxed um, in the last few days here. You, you, what was it last Thursday? The Chinese uh, short-term interest rate went to thirteen and a half percent. Their seven-day repo rate. Right. That's un- That's almost like we were in nineteen eighty-one. Remember? Right. <laughs> and, and, but yeah. they brought it back down. I mean, the PBOC. They have a whole lot more control than the Federal Reserve System, shall we say? You know, in that country, and they brought it back down. It was oh, I don't know, three point eight, three point nine yesterday. Mm-hmm. I don't watch it that close, but. That's that's what's allowed the stock market to get a, another rally going. Well, boy, that's a that's a huge interest rate in China, and of course, the Chinese stock market, you know, has been going down for weeks and weeks and months and months and years and years, and you know, they're telling us that that's going to be the revival of uh, the world economies, but so far that has not happened yet. So, well, what what was happening, Larry? It, I mean, you know better than I because you visit there, I, and I don't. But over the last say ten years. I mean, they've been building the equivalent of a New York City every year because the people have been moving from the rural areas to the urban areas. So that was adding three and a half to four percent of GDP. 
and then they were growing strong, and so their GDP was up in that six, seven percent, and they were doing you know double digits. Mm-hmm. Well, the high interest rates and the over leveraging is you know kind of like we were in 07, 08, It's kind of slowed things down. The, the PBOC the, has tried to control the leverage, and by allowing short-term interest rates to jack up to that 13.5% last week. And, you know, they're, they're saying, you know, don't be over over the edge too far because we're not necessarily going to bail you out. Mm-hmm. And that's between that and the, the slowing down of the urban growth, you know, the, the people moving from the rural areas to the cities, mm-hmm. uh, their real growth rate is probably only 4 or 5%, not, not double digits that we are used to pulling the world economy. Sure. Yeah. So, so this is a yeah. this is a major, you know, a major economic change that's going on, and they're trying to, you know, they're trying to manage the landing. They're trying to manage it to be a soft landing. That's that's what's going on. Well, Rich, thanks for joining us today, and we'll have you on uh, probably in a few weeks, and we'll discuss some of these things that are happening now and see how they turned out. Right, and the most critical thing for the grain markets, so once the the news is out of the way, will be what the weather looks like. Mm-hmm. Um, so much of this corn was planted in a short period of time. The pollination for the corn in late July is going to be critical, and then uh, the weather, growing weather in, in uh, August is always critical for the beans. So you have a great day. Enjoyed it. You take care. Okay, thanks a lot, Rich. Bye. Okay, folks, that's Rich Anderson of Anderson Capital Management. I know some of the things that he talked about there is, uh, you know, his spreads of how they spread different crops, like between SEP wheat and DeSweet wheat and Kansas City versus uh, Chicago and stuff. That's, you know, he's a, he's a wheat farmer. Uh, he's a processor, so he's, he understands all the variables that go into that. You know, what we're really doing is just looking to see for a, a flat-out speculation. We're going to be a farmer for six to eight weeks or three weeks, whatever we decide to be in a position, but we don't have to, you know, buy the land and have the equipment and all the other stuff that's necessary to run an operation, you know, like Rich has. Rich is an integrated, uh, he's a vertically integrated um, farmer. Besides running a hedge fund, uh, he and his brother have, um, they have wheat and barley, and they also have corn, and they also have a cattle feeding operation where they, you know, grow their own calves and stuff. They used to be in the hog business, but they sold it because the hogs are just too difficult to uh, take care of. Okay, we're going to take a look uh, at the silver market and the gold market together uh, right now. Uh, we're going to look at a 60-minute chart, and as you can see, you know, we've, we tried to make a little bottom here uh, in the silver market. We've had some higher bottoms over the last couple of days. I don't think they're going to hold because I think we've got one more jab down in the in the gold market, down to that 1170 per level. But, uh, you know, on a long-term chart on silver, folks, uh, it is very, very difficult to to come in and say you want to be a buyer here because, uh, you know, the long-term chart looks very, very poor. Uh, you know, we have broken support at that $25 per ounce level that we mentioned many times. And uh, the only other support down there is really at the old low from 2010. We're going to take a little break here. and we get back, we're going to talk a little bit about treasury bonds and then also copper. Brian's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar, bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the gold report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. 
With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pizzamento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the Forex market, and more. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two full weeks. That's an $85 value. Yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind. And get the edge you've been looking for. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Now, back to the Futures Hour. Okay, good afternoon, folks, for the wind-up of the show today. We're in the last furlong of an eight-furlong race. We have a chart that we posted into Tiger TV. It's a long-term uh, weekly chart of the Treasury notes. That's the shorter-term paper, you know, 10 years or less. Uh, well, actually, between 5 and 10 years are the notes. Uh, 1 to 5 are the T-bills, and after the 10 are the Treasury bonds. The notes trade uh, much bigger than the, uh, than the bonds. They're about three times the size because those are the ones that determine car rates, uh, you know, your car loans, and also mortgage rates and credit card rates and consumer loans and stuff like that. But the main part about this particular chart is that we've talked about this many times in the past of the head and shoulders pattern that had formed you know back from last uh, from 2011 to 2013 well we, we've reached that first objective we hit an exactly a 61 percent retracement of the low from uh, 2011 uh, that came in uh, you know early last week um, I believe on a Sunday night and now we, we should be in a rally mode in the in the notes and bonds for at least a few weeks and uh, whether that has anything to do with uh, you know stocks going up or down I'm not sure because I think the flight to quality uh, argument that you've heard through the years that certainly hasn't panned out for the people that you know bought into it and uh, that that that's one of the reasons why I'm a technician I try not to listen to what uh, you know people are telling me what's going to happen I just try to look at the charts and see if there was more 
more buyers, prices are going up. If there's more sellers, you know, prices are going down. So we would be looking at a, a potential rally here in Treasury notes of about uh, about four points from where we are now. They're trading around 126 and a half, and I would expect them to get up to about that 130 level, uh, which would be a 61 percent retracement off of the right shoulder, and that will be the the thing that I'd be watching uh, the most right now. As far as uh, you know, what we're looking at with the uh, with the Treasury notes, Treasury bonds look the same. Uh, they made a low down around the 133 level, and uh, so far they've rallied about two and a half points, and another three or four points in the Treasury bonds. You know, getting them up to that 140. One area uh, would certainly look like a good area to be uh, getting ready to short uh, the Treasury bonds. These markets have turned down. Uh, the uh, they they basically have you know taken out last uh, last year's lows in interest rates. That's the first time uh, we've done that in a very very long time. I think more than 25 years that we've had a year where the rates have actually gone down, up more than the previous year, and we've just done that this year. So that is a, a pretty negative thing you know to have uh, you know to be to be occurring so we'll see if it's going to be a, uh, a big factor or not but uh, that's what we're looking at in the Treasury notes uh, at the present time uh, the price of copper we've uh, we've looked at that uh, several times in the past we'll end the show with the price of copper showing this incredible divergence that you know rich mentioned uh, you know that it's just like uh, nothing we've ever seen before folks it is just really uh, amazing the price of collar, copper could collapse uh, like it has with stocks going straight up, you know, for the last uh, 10 months and copper, you know, breaking to the downside. Uh, we've taken out the lows of April and uh, we have uh, actually gone below uh, $3 a pound for the first time in a very long time, well over several years. And uh, right now there doesn't appear to be any bottom in sight, but, you know, a bottom could pick up. I will say this. If the stock market is going to be bullish from here and it's going to go up, you know, really dramatically, copper has got to be the, the most undervalued thing on, the, on this planet because you don't build things in, you know, building and electronics and uh, uh, cars and you know cameras, computers without the use of copper. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless. I'm Steve Rhodes with TFNN.com, and the trend is your friend until it changes. A free special report is now available on the homepage of TFNN.com, and if you have money in the markets, this free report is a must. If your strategy is buy and hold, this report is a must. If you're a day trader, a swing trader, a forex or options trader, or just getting into the markets, this report is a must, and it's the second best gift you'll ever receive. Look, if you buy a stock and the general market is trending in the other direction, you've reduced your odds of buying at the right time by 70%. Instead, let me teach you how to get that 70% advantage plus. The plus is a free trial to my daily newsletter service, Mastering Probability. There's no upfront deposit, no charge to your credit card, and I can press decades of education into each daily newsletter. This is a limited time offer, so act now and I'll teach you how to take the trend and turn it into your best friend. All the details are on the homepage of TFNN.com. Act now.